second. This one's on magnesium, so another hot topic um, out there. Everybody gets their knickers in a knot about magnesium. Let's cover this one as well. Right, let me just share. Okay, so an adult body, this is from the NIH site. An adult body contains approximately 25 grams of magnesium with 50 to 60% present in the bones and most of the rest in soft tissue. So there is a shitload of magnesium in bones. Very important. Boron also has a bit of a role in there as well as salt in sort of the sort of bone mineral mineralization sort of factor, but that's for another day. Okay, less than 1% of total magnesium is in blood serum. Very little. And these levels are kept under tight control. That is the operative word, tight control. Okay, so when people say, oh, you need more and all this sort of stuff. No, the body knows what it's doing. It's been doing it for a very long time. It's not stupid and it is under tight control. Even the NIH, because these are based on studies where they did mechanistic studies, and a lot of these studies were done in the past. So the references, when they could get past, they didn't have ethical committees to worry about, and they were doing real proper clinical studies and measuring people's secretion rates and everything else. So, you know, these are, these, things have been tightly sorted out a long time ago. Why people still make assertions and, and big issues about them is anyone's guess. But we know what causes it. You know, when people do inappropriate things, they fear salt, they dump a whole lot of other electrolytes. So, you know, people just need to get over the fear of salt. Anyway, the only two things that it can actually keep in your other electrolytes are either highly elevated insulin, and that, remember the Walter Kempner 1930s sort of high carbohydrate, very low protein, very low um, uh, electro, um, fat and electrolytes because once you've got very highly elevated um, uh, insulin, you actually have massive water retention. Very hard to excrete things. You know, you excrete um, water, but very hard to excrete minerals. And if you actually try and consume more minerals, you end up bloating like a balloon. So, yes, big issues um, there when it comes to getting proper homeostasis. But that's because... You're not eating an appropriate diet, okay? And these things happen, as they say. Now, normal serum magnesium concentrations between 0.75 and 0.95 millimoles. Um, I'm just going to ignore the other part. Magnesium homeostasis is largely controlled by the kidneys. Yes, it is which typically excretes 120 milligrams of magnesium into the urine each day. So there's the number. We'll come back to that. Urinary excretion is, is reduced when magnesium status is low. So the body basically will reduce the excretion rate and absorb more back if you've got less. The only time it'll actually do a severe dumping to get that other homeostasis is when you basically are not supporting the gradients of the sodium potassium pump, which extracellular and intracellular sort of fluids. When they are out of whack, 
that's when you can actually have quite a bit of electrolyte dumping and that's when you get into trouble. So, and then you get, you know, cramps and all sorts of things. You up your sodium, cramps go away. Sodium keeps the stuff in, keep, maintains the homeostasis. Times the sodium they get today. So get over it, please. It is annoying when I hear comments and people asking me questions about these. Stop fearing salt. It does not create, cause blood pressure. Blood pressure is caused by elevated insulin that causes water retention. So all the diabetics are basically are bloated like mad and have got puffy legs and all that. And when you do go on a low carbohydrate diet, because your insulin comes down, you do dump a lot of water. And one way of actually knowing whether you're still insulin resistant is when you're still urinating quite a bit. Because people, when they're not insulin resistant, don't go very often to the toilet. And neither do they feel thirsty to the, at the same level. So that will tell you that you haven't resolved something. Anyway, let's move on. We have covered this. I'm not going to go into the bones and stuff like that. That is for another day. That is part of a, um, I do have one about bone mineral, mineralization and that will cover that then. So that will be for in other D. So I will move on. Excretion. Somebody wants the bio chemistry or the pathways and all that get back to me and i'll send this to you but this is for the rest of us let's keep it quite simple anyway let's say you take in 360 in the day the body oops will only take 100 you know and the kidneys will actually filter 2.4 every day, far more than you consume. And they'll re reabsorb 2,300. So they only lose 100. The other stuff ends up in the feces. And there's the other small secretion of that 120. That's where the 120 comes. And the other part that is either absorbed or secreted, depends on the homeostasis. So if you don't have enough, it'll keep more. If you um, have too much, it'll get rid of it. You know, it depends. It's all about, you know, managing um, these ions. So, you know, basically there are sensors, they detect how much is coming in. So you can have, you can supplement like mad, you know, you just end up in the, in the loo, in the toilet, you know, so bound to your feces, going, heading out for a pipe to a, um, a, to a location <laughs> out into the sea. So yes. So basically stop wasting your money on magnesium supplements, pretty much. The only time you need to do that is when you basically you have a fear of salt and you've lost you've dumped a lot of your electrolytes of so potassium and magnesium and then basically you need to put them back with a supplement and then you up your sodium to keep the bloody in there and so to keep the body from over secreting and secreting just at the minimal levels that it does as a normal function normal actual function now foods where do we get the stuff Okay, we will ignore this 420 because that's not, not what you need. You're only secreting out 120. So these are the fish. Yep, getting plenty there. And that's only three and a half. Remember, that's only you know, three and a half ounces, 100 grams. I'm not going to eat that little. God, I'd be starving if I just ate that little. So pretty much if I eat, you know, like mackerel, um, 300 or three, I usually um, did consume actually today, actually <laughs> funny, funny, I would 
I actually had mackerel today as a, you know, which was really nice. And I had about 350. So basically what I got is, you know, 97 times 3.5. So I got 300 divided by 120. So I got about 2.8 times my, you know, replacement of those, that stuff that got secreted. So I'm fine on that front. And that's just one food. It's just one single bloody food, pretty much. So you've got different foods here. And if we go to dairy products and eggs, I'll leave the meat for last. So pretty much, you know, if you're into whey powders, you know, I'm not due to deuterium reasons. But, you know, you've got this cheese, you've got hard goat cheese. So 300 grams of hard goat cheese would give you basically 150 odd, 150, 62. You know, so, you know, combining a bit of, bit of cheese with meat will get you there. Some eggs, you know, so it's not difficult based on the excretion rates. And remember, the body will only dump more if it gets more. If it doesn't get as much, remember the excretion rates, the real excretion rates are 120. That's it. So if you take 360 in or 400 or whatever, you're only going to get 100 in as a replacement because you get a reabsorption, some level of reabsorption as well. You're only losing actual 100 from the urine and that 20 is here or there. So basically, you know, I mean, let's take turkey, for instance, if that's your food of choice. So pretty much I usually, if I'm going to have pork or any meat i'm usually having anywhere between 400 to 500 grams let's say i've just had 400 okay so that's four times four times um where's the where's the pork? okay broiled pork tenderloin 35 times 35 got 140 i've got more than basically what i'm secreting out okay just from the pork. Forget about the cheese, forget about any of the other stuff. So forget about my second meal, just from that. So, emu steak, anyone? So as you can see, it's not very hard to get and cover your secretion levels. So, stop worrying about it. There's plenty of animal foods that, and different combinations. Others have more, others have less, but you can actually get your stuff. And remember, most of the stuff in green, green leafy vegetables, forget about the anti-nutrients that will rip your colon apart over years if you consume too much. But beyond that point, most of it's chelated, which basically means that you have to go through a laborious process to try and liberate it and you'll never get it all. So basically, um, one, you're harming yourself with a whole lot, lot of anti-nutrients. And on top of that, you know, you're, even if you get, let's say you were, get, you, were to, you were an exceptional person, you did a whole lot of smoothies, you were able to liberate most of it. At the end of the day, it'd still end up in the toilet. So what have you achieved? And you may have got excess stuff that ends up in the toilet but you're missing out on a whole lot of other nutrition that you could have got from a steak. So yeah, more nonsense, different day. And that's pretty much for magnesium and uh, oh, stay tuned for a future um, uh, one that will happen in the not too distant future shortly. 
um, on electrolytes and electrolyte balances, which will sort of cover this sort of theme of these sort of minerals that everyone keeps on talking about. And I'm sick and tired of hearing the questions about them. Eat a species appropriate diet and you will not have these problems and get enough salt in there and you'll be fine. Anyway, see you till next time.